Shin McDale. Hey, Dave. Good to How see you, man. Hey, thanks Good for coming on you. the Cube. Thanks. Good to see you. Good to see you. So here we are again. Last year we were uh, at the Cube in the Moscone Center. Amazing uh, venue here in Vegas. A little different vibe this year, but... Uh, a little hotter. Yeah, a little hotter, yeah. but, the, but the ecosystem continues to grow, doesn't it? It's heating up. It's a big cumulus cloud. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, um, so we're here in, uh, inside this vendor pavilion surrounded by, uh, by greenery. Last year, as you recall, we were sort of in the, uh, in the open at, uh, at Moscone. But, you know, 19,000 people, I think this is, uh, you know, the, the biggest tech show other than, you know, the show like an Oracle Open World that's sort of, you know, all Oracle, right? Um, right, right. Well, this is a lot more, I'd say, heterogeneous than an Oracle or an EMC world, isn't it? And you that's know? a good word. And one that, that you, as the CEO of Falcon Store, you know, near and dear to your heart, your fundamental strategy is to take this mess out there and, and we're and, an equal bring opportunity it to, to take provider out of technology. Yeah. yeah, we believe in the whole platform. But uh, it is a fantastic show. The, the quality of the customer base that we're seeing here, the education level, the intensity, you know, they're bringing us ideas, they're bringing projects, they've got budget, they've got time. You know, they want to get things done. And this is the best VM world we've ever attended. I'm, I'm really excited. I think it's been a great investment and a good show. Yeah, the quality of the customer is good and, and the diversity is there. So the reason I was bringing up last year is we put forth a vision on theCUBE last year at VMworld about this notion, and I think you coined it, time machine for the enterprise. Right. And um, after that event, you know, I did a lot of thinking about it. I've done a lot of writing on this, published a number of tomes, you know, and, and just thinking about the whole notion of backup, how backup is broken, and, and, and storage as a service and backup as a service, data protection as a service is really the fix. And I thought that was a great vision. So I want to talk to you about that vision so and talk about how Falcon Store is, is executing, what you're actually doing there, and, and where we're at. So let's start with, you know, this notion that storage is, is or backup is broken. And well, yeah, I think. Why is it? There's, there's a great debate around it. And, uh, but you know, actually, we had a big, big debate last year. Uh, most of the naysayers have kind of gone off into the distance because I think it's predominantly viewed that tape has a very specific application and it's no longer to provide quick recovery of lost data. It's just not efficiently built for that. If you're looking to return data to active use quickly, you're going to need to use a snapshot or replication technology. There's really no more debate in that category. If your RTO and RPO is your target and you need to get up fast, you better not be going to tape. So that's a big part of why you know backup is broken because backup historically has been tape. And you've said it very clearly, Dave, you know, backup was a traditionally a batch job. They used the spare cycles inside of the environment to get its job done. And today, so many of our customers out there and many VMworld and VMware attendees are very conscious of the fact that VM uh, virtualization increases utilization and it sucks up all those excess free cycles. They're gone. So you need something that lives within the fabric of your environment that can coincide and coexist with virtualization and collect data as it is created, not just perform some big massive data move at the end of every day. So there's a lot of things that affect the way backup works and we believe that a sound solution in either the physical or especially the virtual space is something that collects the new data all the time repeatedly and so that's when we get into this conversation about time machine for the enterprise because what customers really want is they want a solution that is going to recover their data in the shortest period possible. That's always the goal. You know, the newer the data, the more value the data, and as it gets older, it's going to decrease in value, and so it might take a little longer if you want to do it that way. But right now, we believe that replication and snapshot technology is, is the perfect way to do it. Disk to disk, disk to disk to data center, disk to disk to cloud, you know, that's a great way to get it off site without worrying about tape. And ultimately, if you want to go to long-term storage, you can do archive to tape. Uh, so we're, we're de well down that path. Okay, so I mean, I love the vision, and you're a visionary. You know, you, you, you actually, at Cheyenne, you guys made a really interesting impact on the marketplace. You come into Falcon Store, my friend Ed Walsh, who has, of course, taken over a number of existing companies and done very well, said to me one time, you know, the first thing you do as a, a new CEO when you're taking over an existing company, you immediately figure out where the skeletons are, and then you just be honest about it. You go to the board and you say, look, this is, what, this is the deal, and this is what I'm going to do about it. Talk to me about when you took over at Falcon Store, 
what you found out that you didn't know, what you did about it, and then we'll talk about where you are today and how you're executing. Wow, that's a, that's a tough question, Dave. Um, what I found out was that the company had been in the business of delivering you know, high value technology to a number of important constituents, some of which were EMC, some of which were Sun, you know, large players, IBM. And because of that, you get moved in a lot of different directions. You know, these companies are not trying to do everything the same way. Quite the opposite. They want to do things very differently. Mm -hmm. uh, we had to figure out how to reconcile those individual unique data you know, relationships in terms of code and move to a product line that was consistent, focused, and, and supportable and repeatable. Um, we started a program uh, going back uh, to Q4 of last year called RUM, which was the reliability, usability, manageability release, and it was to build uh, quality into the product, to harden the core of our technology, to make sure that it was very, very scalable and easily managed, because we were going to build on top of that this, this vision of the time machine for the enterprise, this vision of service-oriented data protection. So you've got to really shore up your foundation, make sure it's rock solid, that you integrate well with the environment that you're in, such as VMware, and you're ready to go forward. So the culmination of that effort took place just this last week when we launched V7 for CDP, for NSS, and VTL across the board. It's the highest quality, highest performance, most scalable product we've ever built. And it just so happens to be the only product in the industry that supports 1,000 snapshots, 64 terabytes of, uh, you know, per LUN of, of, of storage space, and it delivers a time machine for the enterprise. And so that's, that's a step forward. But it's also, more importantly, the basis upon which we're building our next generation product, which is going to really deliver on the second part of this conversation, which is automation, 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 mm -hmm. you know, for the whole enterprise. Okay, so you were in a spot where you were doing a lot of custom stuff, it's hard to leverage, you know, and hard to scale, so you made that change, and that had to be tough. Yep. Um, uh, actually, you've held, you've held revenues pretty well considering that transition, haven't you? Well, yeah, we had a significant decline in OEM revenue, with loss of EMC and Sun and the like, uh, Huawei 3Com, and we've managed to keep the top line fairly flat because we're building and growing in the channel. So, you know, the first six months of this year, we're 16% uh, growth over the you know, first six months of last year. So you know, we're growing the business. We're growing it in the channel space. And so as we now have kind of absorbed the blow of moving out of the OEM business, where we're starting to normalize and now we're, we're going in the right trajectory. How about key employee retention? Was that difficult during that time and were you able to navigate through that? No, no, it hasn't been difficult retaining the people that we wanted to retain at all. Uh, I think that what, once you get a group of people together around a shared vision, you know, a shared set of values, and you build a, a, a desired culture, a place where people want to participate, and we're all pulling on the oars in the same direction, it creates a great deal of excitement and buzz. And if you go over to the Falcon Store booth, I think you'll see that's exactly what's going on. And it's also, it's, it's affecting our customers and their enthusiasm and what we're doing. Now, the other thing you've talked about on the, your, your, your earnings calls is, you weren't really happy with the quality and you've, you've put in some programs in place. Can you talk about that a little bit? What you've done there and, and what the result has been? <laughs> well, it's interesting, you know, when I sit down and talk to customers and I ask them, you know, what's missing in terms of, you know, your storage management, your data protection space, you know, the thing that they come to me with is, is automation. You know, Jim, we really need to be able to manage this stuff through vSphere, through vCloud Director, you know, give me a single pane of glass, automate, automate, automate. And when I talk to my engineers and I say, how are we going to bake in quality, make it a part of our core process, be able to do regression testing and repeat it every single time and get through the six to 7,000 test cases we have to get through, they give me the same answer. Automate, automate, automate. You know, we got to do this. So we've invested heavily in, in test systems and automation solutions in engineering, which enabled us to get through that very arduous uh, QA cycle that we created for, for V7. And it carries forward. So we've, we've changed the way we architect products. You know, we're more in an agile development environment now. We do a build every day. We test and we test and we test as we're developing the code. So it's a, it's a big shift in the way we build stuff. So I look at V7 that you've announced recently as kind of the substrate of this vision that we've been talking about. Um, it enables the time machine for the enterprise. You've, you've given glimpses of what's called Bluestone. Um, what can you tell us about that? Can you show a little leg, you know, put forth a vision? What, what can people expect? 
Yeah, you know, most everything we do is not is not really rocket science. It's based on customer demand and requirements. And sometimes customers can tell you a story about what they're dealing with, and they don't necessarily articulate the solution, but they share the problem and the pain, and it's our job to figure it out. Um, in, in such uh, a conversation, I was dealing with one particularly large company uh, with about 135 data centers, and they said, Jim, your stuff is really great. You know, the replication is fantastic. You know, database refresh is working wonderfully. WAN optimization is awesome. Uh, I said, great, you know, deploy it across the enterprise. They said, there's one problem. Um, we're not going to be able to scale it. And I said, why? They said, well, because we're going to be managing millions and millions of objects. So, you know, how do you do that? And so my question to them is, well, how do you do it today? How do you manage this, this, this huge enterprise? And they said, well, obviously, we have an exchange service. We have a database service. We have a web portal service. You know, everything is managed and accounted for and, and controlled on a service level. Well, obviously, that's what we're doing here. I mean, anyone who's spinning up a VMware machine you know, has, a, has a use for it. And it's generally going to be delivering some sort of service. The data protection space has not tracked with the business need. So we need an operating model that matches their deployment model. And, and that's what we're doing. So service-oriented data protection is the ability to look at a service inside of an environment and move that service information so you have data coherency, you're creating a consistency group, so whether you're backing it up to protect it or you're moving it from New York to Chicago, you have the ability to do that because everything is controlled at the same level. So a single policy, a single pane of glass across a complex set of applications that have a relationship. That's what we need to do. It's kind of the Humpty Dumpty thing. We need to keep everything together in one piece to be able to move it back and forth. The reason people never want systems to go down is because when they fall down and they break, it's so hard to put them back together again. So our job is to understand the relationships of all these different applications and keep them in a single solid piece. That's service-oriented data protection and that's what we're building right now. And that's a big software challenge, obviously, and that's really where you must be putting a lot of emphasis. And, and right? you know, I, I would say that our, our thinking is a little bit different today than it was when you and I first sat down and talked about it. Yeah. And, and maybe it's because, you know, I got the bill from the engineering team that said, yeah, your 15,000 square foot house is going to cost you $15 million, yeah. you know? Um, and so I said, well, maybe we could start with a cottage, right? So we are, we are scaling back a, a little bit of the vision, but it's, it's actually, I think, going to be far more effective because we're going to be delivering a much more concise user experience. You know, one that enables them to present their environment and we're going to be able to say, hey, look at here's an entire tree of, of VMware servers. We can back them up with one click. And you can set one policy, and you can you can do it all day long. You know, it's going to be extraordinarily powerful. And uh, in Q1 of, of next year, we're going to be showing it. Good. I'm I'm very excited about that because I mean, this vision imply. I mean, you know, we've talked about this a lot. That backup is when one size fits all. Right? Really, really two sizes fits all. Right? If you got a zillion dollars to spend in a high value application, go SRDF it. Right. And then do a, a daily incremental and a weekly full for everything else. That's that's your backup. Yeah. That's it. That's your choice. You know, and so what you're describing is something that's very a business view, um, understanding the the value of as a business owner. I know what the value of my information is, and and okay, great. I want to turn it up or down based on that value and be charged accordingly. That's the vision that you're yeah, putting and, forward. And I right? think you want a report that is going to tell you, without a, you know, great deal of detail, that you've got a green light. You yeah. know, that you can recover any service in your environment in less than ten minutes. You know, what we're showing here at the, sh at, at the show today is, you know, Falcon Store's, you know, CDP solution has the best RTO and RPO in the industry. There's no quicker or faster way to recover data than what we're doing. As you said, that's the substrate, you know, that we're building Bluestone upon. So it doesn't matter how well automated and how elegant and how beautiful your interface is and how cool it is in, in a browser if it doesn't have the hardcore heavy lifting technology underneath it. And that's what we've been investing in, in the past year. So I'm, I'm excited about what's coming, and I'm also excited about the fact that we're delivering rock solid solutions to our customers today, and we're giving them a path you know, going forward. So that's a Q1 announcement? It's a Q1 announcement, yeah. Great, looking forward to that, Jim. Uh, well listen, appreciate you coming on theCUBE. Dave, it's always a pleasure. You're, uh, we could go on and on. Um, we got a very tight schedule today. This is the big day, so I appreciate you day. making some, uh, some time for us. Thank you very much, Dave. Great Have a good you. show. All right, thank you, Jim.